now that we have our cheeky little intro out of the way, just one last thing to mention before we roll the new chunk. The video you're seeing is actually a dramatization. The reason being is there's something stopping my graphics card from recording the animations that the website generates, so I had to go back and record this with OBS. So no live reaction this time, but I'll make sure to get it next time. And that is all there is to say, let's see what chunk we're going to next. Remington, it looks like we are going to be doing some mining. If I'm honest, uh, this was definitely the chunk that I wanted. It's going to take less time and it will give me a few upgrades and chance to level up my combat skills before I really have to start going hard in the combat area. So let's go see what this chunk has to offer. The first thing you always unlock when you walk into a new chunk is the music tracks. And with this one, we actually have two. So now we can jam to Attention and Emperor as we grind out our new goals. But before we do that, we are going to stroll on up to Anhan Hingle's house, who you'll meet again later, and grab our first weapon on the account, the Bronze Scimitar. It's not actually a chunk task to get this because there is a better one available through drops, but we'll go over all of the goals after we are finished exploring this chunk and getting all the free stuff it has to offer. I finally have a way to cook that delicious rat meat that I have so readily available, but it still gives us our first source of food on the account and was one of the major reasons that I wanted to roll the Remington chunk before the Asgardian Ice Dungeon. So no matter what combat grinds we get ourselves into, we at least have some, even though it is a terrible form of food. Welcome to Brian's Archery Supplies. Actually a pretty sweet shop to have with one unfortunate drawback and that is it doesn't have standard bows so we can't actually get our range training started until we get a hold of one of those or possibly consider trying to lamp to level 5 so that we could just start with an oak bow. We're gonna go take a look at the crafting shop although from looking at the tasks on the chunk picker, I don't think this gives us any value right now. We don't have access to any level 1 crafting and we don't have a furnace, so I don't even see it being useful for quite a while. And that brings us to the last shop, the general store. It's got a couple things that we can make use of. The tinderbox, so that we could start our own fires. We'll buy one now even though this would have been more useful if we didn't have the range. And of course we can sell off some of the junk that we don't need and start building our gold stack, which will be very slow, but eventually we'll have a bank and access to better shops that we can actually make use of, so there's no reason not to start building it. And now that we have that tinderbox, we can cross off one of the chunk tasks, which is to just light a fire. While we're on the topic, let's talk chunk tasks. As I mentioned before, we now have access to a tinderbox, so we need to make use of our level 1 fire making skills to burn logs, and that's already done. Next, we'll need to make use of our amazing level 1 cooking skills to cook some delicious rat meat, and that also unlocks our first food source for the account. And the big skilling goal for this chunk is to get level 40 mining so we can mine some gold ore in the Remington Mine. Moving on to our best in slot chunk tasks. I misspoke earlier when I said the brown scimitar wasn't a requirement. It is actually our best in slot melee weapon, so we do have to get it, but it practically gets itself. The other two upgrades I'm going to walk away with are the bronze med helm and the iron dagger, which I will be getting from Anha and Hengel, who I will introduce you to now. These two poor souls live a quiet life in Remington, and I am going to just have to run into their bedroom and murder them on repeat until I get all this stuff. As far as rarity is concerned, the worst we have to grab is a 1 out of 128, but there are two of them as you can see. The most useful things we'll get out of this grind are the runes and the iron dagger for a little bit of magic experience and DPS increase. 
But since the last thing we did was finish the goblin drop table, I am gonna start by getting the 40 mining requirement out of the way. So in the background here this whole time, I've been hanging out at the little store that I now have access to and selling off everything I don't need so that I can make as much space in my inventory as possible. And so this brings us to our first, and I'm sure not last, staple of every RuneScape series. The Mining Leveling Montage. milestone coming here we are now level 15 mining which means we can tap into the iron ore and that is what we will be mining all the way up to level 40 and this will be a nice boost to our xp per hour Level 30, 10 more to go. Steal my ore and ruin my montage. Oh, you savage. And so ends our first skilling grind. We have made it all the way to level 40 on iron ore with the bronze pickaxe so that we could mine this fancy looking gold ore over here and complete one of our chunk tasks. The grind wasn't too bad. The worst that we had to deal with was um, fighting the bots here, honestly. There are tons of them mining the iron, so I had to hop worlds a lot and find worlds where I could actually get access to two veins next to each other so I could do it efficiently, but that was the worst I had to deal with, so it really wasn't too bad. So whenever my guy decides to actually mine the gold ore instead of just hitting it, we will call this chunk task complete. And there it is, we have mined a gold ore. I also was saving this clue geode, so let's open that and see if it happens to be one that's nearby. And wow, look at that. That is very lucky. It is actually the only step that is really close. It is right over in Port Sarum. So with one lucky trunk roll, we could be able to complete our first beginner clue step. While we're checking off the big skilling tasks, we might as well check off the small and the last skilling task, which is to cook some meat, which we have to get from the rats. So we'll be using this rat meat during our combat grind, which is kind of gross, but should help things out and speed things up from the goblin drop table completion. Absolutely humongous level coming in here with our next hit. We will be 16 strength and one bone berry away from level 9 prayer and look at this we got the cabbage on the kill as well this is going to be a stacked clip
Okay, there is one of the items we needed for best in slot and to complete the drop table, the bronze med helm. First, helmet on the account, so big buff coming in. There we go, another drop needed from the table, the Earth Talisman. Check it off the list. Hey, yeah! 20 hit points, 20 attack, 20 strength, and 20 defense for a clean combat level 25. Started the clip a bit late here, but we got the Iron Dagger drop, which is cool, mostly because it lets us complete two chunk tasks with one drop. Oh, nice. There is the chaos runes I have been hunting. Here I was just minding my own business, and I got my first genie random. For those of you who aren't familiar, they just give you a little lamp that gives you a small amount of experience in any skill that you choose. So they can end up being really impactful to accounts with restrictions like this because you can get experience in things that you don't actually have a way to train. I hadn't actually thought about what skill I was going to use these lamps on, so I took some time to consider my options and decided to go with ranged. I have the archery shop here, and I can't make use of it until I get a standard bow or level 5 in ranged, and the only way for me to get a hold of a standard bow in the near future would be through a clue scroll reward, and that is not going to be consistent for me because there's only one or two completable steps nearby. And I don't have a clip for every drop that was on the drop table, so to finish off this chunk, we're just going to take a look at the drop from the loot tracker. If you combine the KC, because the drop tables are identical, it took us 370 to get everything we needed, but as you can see, we got the fishing bait, bronze arrow, all the runes, and copper ore that were required to officially finish the drop table. One thing I forgot to mention in the beginning was that I also have to start the quest Witch's Potion. This is my first quest that I can start, and I'm frustratingly close to being able to finish it. I just need one ingredient, and that is the Eye of Newt, which I can buy over in Port Serum whenever I unlock that chunk. But for now, we've started it, and that's all we can do, so chunk task complete. And that takes us back to one of the most exciting places of the entire series, the chunk map. I won't go over all of the completed tasks again because we went over those throughout the video, but as you can see, everything is green logged here, including our large list of drop tables. There was 42 tasks and we have completed them all, which means we are ready to move on to the next chunk. We have four options available. One is the Asgardian Ice Dungeon, two is Port Serum, three is, I guess, Southern Falador, but it's mostly just this crossroads, and then four is the other side of Remington, which also has Melzar's Maze in it. If you take a look here, the monsters available if we were to get the Asgardian Ice Dungeon are Black Knights, Guards, Muggers, Pirates, Rats, Thieves, and Worm Brains. I have no idea what that one is. That might be a members thing. Um, and that means this would be all of the items we need to acquire because those are all on the drop tables of the monsters I just listed. So, yeah. That's way more than 42. I can't see exactly how many, but there would be a lot of monster killing if we get chunk number one. There is a trading post apparently on this southern end of the dock, but we wouldn't be able to reach it because we have to go through Port Serum to get to it. No items spawn, so no free goodies from this chunk. And yeah, we've already gone over all that. If we are to get Port Serum, a few less monsters, man, seagull, thief, and women. That means our potential chunk task would be a lot different here, much shorter list. We would finally have to start our magic training because we would have access to runes from the rune shop here. We would have great access to food. We would have access to the battle axe shop so we could get our first adamant weapon, which would be obviously a huge upgrade. Um, if I had to choose, this would definitely be the chunk that I want next. 
it would just make a lot of the other chunks around it and really everything I do so much easier from here on out having access to food and a rune shop and even the battle axe shop would be nice and we'd be able to start a few quests and we'd also be able to finish the witch's potion because we'd be able to buy that eye of newt so yeah this would just be a really sweet chunk to get number three has air wizards, earth, earth wizards, fire wizards, guards, highwaymen, men, and water wizards. So those are pretty consistent rune drops. That's kind of nice. It looks like there is also the Wange Chains down here in southern Falador that we can just barely sneak around. So we'd be able to get uh, some chain mail there, which would be nice. Uh, doesn't help us with quests or clue steps. We would have access to the air altar, which would be super boring, but there. And yeah, as you can see from this, it's mostly drop tables again. Big one here would be casting high level alchemy, which doesn't sound terrible to a normal account because you just have to be level 55 for that. But it would be pretty terrible for us because we would have to do that all off of runes that we get as drops. So that's a lot of KC just to get drops. Um, everything else here, oh, also burning U logs. That would require us to be level 60 wood cutting to chop them and level 60 fire making to burn them. So that's another decent grind there. So yeah, looking at these, this is not an ideal chunk. Don't really want to get this one. Number four has a bunch of monsters that we wouldn't actually be able to access because they're inside the maze. We would be able to get access to an imp spawn, rat, and zombie rats, but I think those are also in Melzar's maze. Yeah, that would be a pretty easy chunk. We would just have to do the imp's drop table. But like I said, really hoping for number two. Really don't want to get number three or number one right now. Not that they're terribly hard, but they just would require a large amount of KC to get the drops that we would need to complete the few tasks at hand. So same as last time, we will end the episode here and we'll save the chunk roll for the beginning of the next episode. Which means the last thing I need to do is thank you all for the support of the series so far. I really appreciated all the likes and comments, so keep them coming and make sure to subscribe if you want to be the first to know when the next video is dropped. That's all for now, so farewell, and I will see you in episode 3.